Vendors are responsible for the technology they release. Brilliant or bust? I think everybody on this particular oh, time to go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> makes technology or at least manipulates it heavily. What say you, Mr. Sherman? I can't think I've ever been in a in a in a product or workflow or development meeting where we consider the moral implications of that which we produce. Nick, no, is it, uh, do, do, you, do you and John think about that? Yes and no, because. Um, for the first time in our history, we turned down a client because they, they were going to be archiving uh, pretty much hateful content for us to turn. And it's quite a big deal. You know, we're a small company. We take that sort of moral stance. You know, someone else will go in and do that. And that's fine. But I think that for us, as a smaller company, we have to be proud to stand up and talk about the customers we've got. Steve Ford. We're a multi-billion dollar publicly traded company. We make a living selling software. That's, you know, that's how we put food on the table. From a license perspective, what people, somebody does with our software is we can't control that, right? Um, you just, and, you and can't. And to a certain extent, you're so big, how, how could you know what everybody was doing with your software? And that's, you know, the EULA, the end user license agreement that everybody clicks when they install the software or use the software specifically says that the company who produces it is indemnified mm -hmm. from whatever you do with it. That being said, I do think that there is a moral compass. We innovated and we've invested massively in video, audio, and image processing. This is a primary driver for our future. So as a software vendor, yeah. we're gonna invest in this. Um, that being said, yeah. I will be brutally frank. There is times when we go, we should not do that. We are asking ourselves, yeah. just because we can doesn't mean we should. We can't let we can't put the genie back in the bottle, but maybe this is another area where we need to innovate. We need to come up with technology that can either authenticate, attribute, detect. And I think that's the stuff that's going to massively impact, especially when we think of broadcast workflows or video and audio workflows overall. Um, I'd see a lot of room for innovation there. Rich, is this something that you're kind of thinking about how you build into the, um, the media toolkit? Before we started the company, we spent six months thinking about, amongst other things, the moral question of what we were about to do, because there is a question mark about the responsibility level you have and where that, where, where's that delimited? Because you can't stop people using things for things they weren't meant to. I think it's very different if you manufacture guns and then are surprised when people use them to shoot things. But I think it's different if you're manufacturing you know, a soft toy and that gets used to bludgeon somebody. That's, a, you know, you can't really be the soft toy manufacturer is not responsible for that misuse of their product. And I think we unfortunately sit somewhere in a very difficult gray area <laughs> where we know what we're making may be misused. <clears throat> and, and in most cases, we just have to legally indemnify ourselves against it, which yeah. is is not a, a, a great way of dealing with it. It's just pushing the responsibility off. There is a point where you look at what you're doing and say, should we release this to the world? Yes, should, for sure, someone will do it. But do we want to be the people to do it? And I think when you can yeah. make the decision not to do that, that's, that's when you've really stepped up and, and, and proven that you are in it for the right reasons rather than just for money.